Hey all, welcome to Share Trek. This is Raj here, friends. Today I want to talk to you about uh, the gene editing universe and how players stack up against each other. Also, I want to talk about something very interesting that I found. Uh, that's why I made this video, in fact, and it's about uh, a gene editing system similar to CRISPR-Cas9 made by a company that has a high number of patents to its uh, uh, name in the gene editing field. And I was thinking, why is this not as famous as CRISPR-Cas9 and why haven't we heard about it? So in this video, I investigate the company a little bit. If you're curious, please watch till the end. It's a very interesting read. With that said, let's get started. <music> Welcome back friends. Recently I came across a market research abstract and uh, thought that uh, what I saw there might be of interest to our community out here. Uh, first, let me show you a scatter diagram and discuss it because it talks about various CRISPR vector companies. And when I say CRISPR vector companies, I'm talking about companies which are in gene editing. And uh, some companies we follow and um, many that I'm hearing for the first time uh, feature in this particular scatter diagram. Uh, some are private companies as well, so that's the reason why we haven't heard about them. So here is the diagram. So if you look at this diagram, we have bubble sizes, and the bubble size determines uh, is determined by the uh, volume of uh, patents uh, that the companies have accumulated between 2020 and 2022. So if you look at uh, one of the biggest one out here, it's Merck, and then the other one is Inscripta. This is the company I'm talking about. And we'll look at it in a bit more detail later on. And I'll also describe their editing system, which is uh, equivalent to CRISPR-Cas9. Then we have Editas Medicine. And then we have CRISPR Therapeutics. And then the next bigger one is uh, Massachusetts General Hospital. And then Intelia Therapeutics. These round up the bigger ones. And of course, there is Vertex out here in the next level, along with Regeneron. So this is the lay of the land. And you can see Ginkgo Bioworks is out here. And uh, it has got a high geographic reach. And if you look at the application diversity, uh, it's very high for Vertex and um, for CRISPR therapeutics, uh, Beam therapeutics, Toolgen, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center, uh, and um, uh, KSQ therapeutics, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and Editas Medicine. Editas Medicine is somewhere in between, but um, CRISPR definitely has got a huge application diversity. But in terms of geographics, uh, Ginkgo Bioworks is out there because they have got Concentric, uh, which is the geo uh, security uh, business that they have. And uh, we have Verve Therapeutics, Modalis Therapeutics, Intima Sciences, Biosciences, and uh, Sniper Biome. So there's a whole lot of companies we have not heard about. And my interest is basically on Inscripta, uh, and uh, before I proceed further, I'll show you the same uh, data in a different manner. And if you look at this particular diagram out here, I've sorted the companies based on the total number of patents. So CRISPR Therapeutics has the maximum number of patents from 2010 to 2021, followed by Editas Medicine and then Inscripta and then Merck. And this is the reason why I got very curious about Inscripta. And uh, what I found there was very, very interesting. It so happens that Inscripta is a privately held company. That is one of the main reasons why we haven't heard about them before. It was founded in 2015 by Andrew Gast and Ryan T. Gill and uh, Tanya Lipscomb. Uh, it provides genome uh, editing tools for uh, academic and uh, commercial customers. In 2018, Inscripta acquired Solana Biosciences, a life sciences company founded by veterans of Illumina. And Inscripta has an enzyme engineering program rather than a particular uh, application. Uh, they aim to provide uh, tools for their customers to create their own applications faster to tackle the lack of uh, access and high costs of CRISPR gene editing enzymes. Inscripta is engineering CRISPR uh, endonucleases called MADzymes. And I took a look at their MAD7 enzyme, uh, which is what uh, is uh, their flagship enzyme. Like CRISPR-Cas9, MAD7 is an RNA-guided system. It uses a small piece of RNA called a guide RNA or gRNA to target and bind to specific DNA sequences. MAD7 is a CRISPR-associated endonuclease derived from uh, Staphylococcus uh, aureus bacteria. And uh, MAD7 is a smaller uh, molecule in size as compared to uh, Cas9. Uh, this smaller size can have advantages in certain applications as it may be easier to deliver it into various cells. 
Mad Sun recognizes a different uh, protospacer uh, adjacent motif or uh, something that we call as PAM, P-A-M, all capitals, uh, compared to Cas9. So that is the main difference. Both CRISPR-Cas9 as well as Mad Sun perform the same function, but they use a different addressing system in order to uh, take the molecular scissors to the right location. The PAM sequence is a specific DNA sequence that is required for the binding and uh, cleavage of uh, target DNA. Madsen's uh, PAM recognition sequence is different from Cas9's, which means it can target different DNA sequences. So they can be used in different uh, uh, situations. Uh, one situation will be more uh, suited for CRISPR-Cas9 as compared to Madsen and vice versa. MAD7 has been uh, engineered to enhance its uh, specificity, potentially reducing off-target effects, which are a concern in genome editing. As I mentioned earlier, PAM stands for protospacer adjacent motif, and it's an essential concept in the world of CRISPR gene editing. To appreciate how CRISPR-Cas9 and MAD7 target differently, let's break down what PAM is and how it works. Uh, think of DNA as a long, complex instruction manual for building and operating living things like us. Within this manual, there are specific sections uh, or genes uh, that we might want to edit, like correcting a typo in a book. CRISPR-Cas9 and MAD7 are like molecular scissors that can cut the DNA at specific places, allowing us to modify the instructions written in the DNA. To use these scissors, they need to find the exact spot in the DNA manual where they should make the edit or cut. This is the spot determined by a sequence of letters in the DNA, kind of like a zip code that tells you where to send a letter. CRISPR-Cas9 zip code is NGG, where N uh, is a variable and GG uh, is the sequence. So uh, what it means is that it looks for a specific sequence where a letter N, which can be any letter, is followed by two G letters. Uh, if it doesn't see this uh, zip code, it won't cut. MAD7 has a different uh, zip code uh, um, system, which is TTN, where, uh, which means it looks for two T letters followed by any letter. The N after TT is standing for any letter. This is not the uh, same as the NGG code used by CRISPR-Cas9. Then you will ask why we have not heard about it before. This is because majority of uh, human genome can be addressed uh, with CRISPR-Cas9 zip codes, and very few locations have a MAD7. MAD7 is more suited for plant, bacteria, and fungi. So that's the reason why we haven't heard about MAD7 as much in this particular channel. Now let's take a quick look at Inscripta website uh, before we close out this video. Here we are on the website of uh, Inscripta and in terms of technology they have got uh, the Genoscalar trademark platform and MAD7 uh, nucleus. So if we go to Genoscalar what it says is that engineering biology is slow, laborious and expensive until now and they have this graphic here which shows how uh, uh, Genoscalar and lean bioengineering is uh, superior with Inscripta as compared to uh, others because they can improve the fitness of a particular genome uh, much more rapidly, faster, uh, without um, uh, using a lot of uh, time and resources. Inscripta's proprietary platform achieves results 400,000 times faster with 100 uh, times higher uh, possibility of success and reduces development cost by tenfold. Continuously discover and integrate custom genome-wide edits and recombine many beneficial edits or cycles in order to improve a particular strain. So by applying directed evolution techniques, Genoscalar recombines the strain uh, which a client may have with the highest scale-up potential with all the other genetic edits that demonstrate prom promising results. This is done in silico using statistical modeling of uh, genotype, uh, phenotype data. Once the most promising candidates are identified, the Genoscalar team builds additional combinational libraries to eff efficiently search for large sequ uh, sequence spaces to rapidly improve performance. The entire process results in a commercially compliant strain with greater than 10,000 times productivity compared to the base strain. So this means that if a customer comes to Inscripta with a base strain that they are using currently to produce some enzymes, that base strain can be made uh, almost 10,000 uh, 10, times better. And that whole pr process can be done much faster using the Geoscalar platform. And then if we were to look at MAD7 nucleus, it says 
The last thing you should have to worry about in product development is choosing the right CRISPR nucleus. You need licensing access to any field or application you may wish. Inscript had developed and released the MAD7 nucleus to the global research community in 2017 under broad technology access program to democratize access to CRISPR and promote its widespread adoption in both academic and commercial settings. Inscripta now offers a portfolio of MAD Zyme TM nucleases under an expanded non-exclusive licensing program, including several MAD variants with improved properties such as expanded PAM sites, uh, altered activity profiles, and higher fidelity. So expanded PAM site means they are going to look at more uh, zip codes. So that makes uh, MAD7 uh, uh, modification, modified MAD7 or uh, MAD Zyme TMs uh, much more widely applicable. So this company is really good and it's worth uh, checking out. And uh, the other sections they have here is uh, resources with videos and webinars, documentation, blog, news and events. Bedokan researching partners with Inscripta to sustainably develop and manufacture naturally produced ingredients. Inscripta acquires Infenome Biosciences and Sestina Bio to advance sustainable biomanufacturing. Sestina Bio uses Inscripta's Onyx platform to develop microbial strain ready for scale up in less than 12 months. So friends, we have been looking at Ginkgo Bioworks extensively. Uh, I would uh, I would think that Inscripta might probably be a competitor for uh, Ginkgo Bioworks because they seem to be doing something similar. And on top of that, they have a, a platform and they are creating um, uh, gene editing nucleases. So friends, this is the exciting uh, era where we have a whole lot of uh, companies doing various things with uh, the genome. I mean, just uh, if you think back to 30 years before, uh, everything was uh, taken for granted with regard to an organism. And in order to get a different strain, people used to keep on breeding uh, selected uh, uh, plant specimens or animals in order to uh, enhance a particular trait. Now we have a shortcut. We understand what is DNA, what is genome, how genes can impact uh, various organisms and their functions. And uh, then the other development is our ability to edit genes in order to uh, fix the defects. We have base editing, prime editing, and CRISPR-Cas9. Now we have this entire MAD, uh, MAD7 and uh, its uh, affiliated variants uh, that can help uh, uh, edit uh, fungi and uh, plants and other, uh, other non uh, uh, non-identified um, organisms that we do not see on an ongoing basis. So uh, I think uh, we are in a very uh, interesting times. We are very lucky to be born in these times. And uh, these companies are all going to make a major splash sooner rather than later. And also in good time because uh, we are in a situation where the environment is um, getting out of control. We have got uh, hurricanes uh, at higher frequency. We have got forest fires which are uh, much more uh, difficult to uh, contain. And uh, we have uh, pandemics coming up and our knowledge of genomics, uh, which is the basically the holy grail of life uh, and the tools that are needed to uh, edit genomics is going to help us solve a whole lot of uh, problems. We can create drought resistant uh, crops and uh, we can also create um, uh, organisms that can eat uh, earlier uh, non-degradable uh, substances like plastics and uh, other uh, chemicals. Uh, so that they can all be returned back to neutral. So uh, those are the promises from uh, genome uh, editing and uh, genomics. So I'm looking forward to that era, and I hope you guys are also as excited about this. Uh, so this is what I wanted to talk about in the video. Uh, this is not something that's going to give you immediate uh, uh, returns or anything. The, in fact, Inscripta is not even in the market. But as a genomics investor, being aware of all the things that are out there and in the process of being developed, is a very, very important thing, uh, in my opinion. I think as an investor, it's very important to be having a situational awareness of what's happening in the field. So these small bits of information, I think you should put at the back of your mind so that when you see something in the horizon, we can be the early bird to catch an investment opportunity. With that, my friends, I wish you have a great weekend. I'll catch up with you again later on. Bye for now.